This question is about solving a trigonometric equation um, and there are two ways really to do this uh, question, either using identities or um, going a more direct or a definition approach. The first way I'm going to show you is using the identities, which I think is easier. The next way I'm going to show you is what a lot of students do in the exam, um, so I'll show you it just for that reason. But I would encourage you to do this first method. We are solving between theta is 0 and 180. Remember where you're solving between. The following key thing here is that we've got three thetas. Okay, so that's going to be important. We're going to extend our uh, domain uh, by three so that in the end when we divide by three we get the answers in the range and we're giving our answers to one decimal place. And we're in degrees here. Okay, now, first thing to notice, whenever I see cot squared and coset, I think hold on a minute, I know an identity where there's a cot squared and coset squares involved. Is there any way I can use that? Because that would help me translate everything in terms of maybe cosec or cot, whatever it is, and then I could solve a quadratic in disguise. Well, if you can't remember the formulas, you can always generate them. The one you must remember is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. If I divide everything here through by sine squared theta, I would get 1 plus cot squared theta is equal to 1 over sine squared, which is cosec squared theta. Now that's going to help me because this gives me a way of writing cot squared in terms of cosec squared. Namely, making cot squared the subject of the formula, cot squared theta must be cosec squared theta subtract 1. Very important. I can now substitute in for this, and then I have everything in terms of cosec, um, three thetas, and then I could solve easily. So let's do that. Two, I am going to replace this by cosec squared three theta, subtract one, and that's going to be equal to seven cosec three theta, subtract five. Let's multiply this out. 2 cosec squared 3 theta subtract 2 is equal to 7 cosec 3 theta um, subtract 5. Now I'm going to subtract the 7 cosec 3 theta of both sides and add um, 5 to both sides. So I'm going to get 2 cosec squared 3, 3 theta subtract 7 cosec 3 theta plus 3 is equal to 0. I have now got a quadratic in terms of cosec. Can, <clears throat> can I factorise this? Well, yes, I can. You could always use the formula here, but if you just think ahead, you might be able to factorise. This factorises as 2 cosec uh, 3 theta here and cosec 3 theta here. I've got to multiply to positive 3 and add up to negative 7. So if I have a negative 3 here and a negative 1 there, that would give me the negative six, co six cosec and the negative cosec, so I'd have no negative seven cosec, and these two multiply to three, so I've got it. So if these two are equal to zero, then on the one hand, I have got that two cosec three theta minus one is zero, or cosec three theta is equal to three, now this one here would give me that, if I'm rearranging this in terms of cosec, cosec 3 theta would be equal to a half, and therefore uh, sine of 3 theta would equal to 2, which I can't have. So I'm going to ignore this solution, because sine is between negative 1 and 1. And this one here would give me that sine of 3 theta would be equal to a third, and then I can uh, inverse sign both sides. So 3 theta would be the inverse sign of a third. So if I tap that in my calculator, my calculator this time being in degrees mode, inverse sign of 1 third. And I get myself 19.47. Uh, Okay, I'm just going to rub this working away now. You keep this in your working. So there's my principal angle, 19.47. But I'm going to draw the sine graph and find all, 
any other values that might be appropriate for me. Now because I'm dealing with 3 theta, I'm going to extend this out uh, by times and by 3. So I'm going to extend it out to 540. So sine graph looks like this. That's 360. So th this here is 90, 180, 270, 360. It's going to go up and down here. So that bit's going to be 450. And this bit here is going to be 540. Right? OK. So 19.5 was one of my answers. So I'm going to get an answer here about 19.5 and then there will be other answers across the page uh, across the sine graph like this there will be one so there's 19.5 there'll be one here at 180 minus 19.5 one here 360 plus 19.5 and one here 540 minus 19.5 so I'm just going to move this up here so our 3 theta is therefore going to be 19.5. Actually, let's keep it to, because we want it to one decimal place, let's write everything to two decimal places and round only at the end. So 19.47, 180 minus 19.47, which is 160.53. 360 plus 19.47, which would be 3. Uh, 79.47 and the last one would be 540 minus 19.47 which would be equal to 520.53 theta therefore dividing all of those by 3 and rounded to 1 dp would be 6.5 degrees 53.5 degrees One two six point five degrees and one seven three point five degrees, one seven three point five degrees, and there are all your answers for ten marks. Okay, I'm just going to quickly show you this the other way. Um, what some students like to do is translate this back into sines and coses. Okay, so they're going to write cot squared. Well, they know that cot of theta is cos over sine cos over sine theta. So they're going to replace this by 2 and they're going to say this is the same as cos of 3 theta over sine of 3 theta squared. And they're going to say that's equal to 7 cosec and cosec is 1 over sine of 3 theta. Subtract 5. So they're going to use that logic here. So they're going to square this and they're going to get 2 cos, cos squared 3 theta over sine squared 3 theta is equal to 7 over sine 3 theta subtract 5. They multiply everything by sine squared 3 theta to remove this off the bottom and they get 2 cos squared 3 theta is equal to 7 sine 3 theta because sine squared over sine just gives me sine on top minus 5 sine squared of 3 theta. Then they have sines and coses going on so they need to replace this by 1 minus sine squared. So they would have 2, 1 minus sine squared of 3 theta is equal to 7 sine of 3 theta subtract 5 sine squared of 3 theta. So let's try and move this up here. Okay, so multiplying that out, they would have 2 subtract 2 sine squared 3 theta is equal to 7 sine of 3 theta subtract 5 sine squared of 3 theta and then they would uh, add 5 sine squared 3 theta to both sides and subtract 7 sine theta so they would get 3 sine squared 3 theta subtract 7 sine of 3 theta um, add 2 equals 0 they would then try and factorize this as follows and they would ignore this solution here because it would tell you that sine theta is 2 and they would get that sine 3 theta is a third. That's exactly what we got here. We got sine 3 theta was a third. So you get the exact same thing. 
I have to say this method, the method that I showed previously is far more elegant and better because this method is just a bit clumsy and sloppy but it still gets you the right answer and that's that.